Jesus, oh, hello. We have a new engineer today, P Dub. P Dub. And my guest today, I'm watching myself, Matt, and I don't sink. Hey, hello to Ward 13. There you it's go. July 5th, 2016. We're live here at beautiful downtown Manchester. And you can call in 413 0223 to harass me or my guest. Matt Connerton. Or, uh, you know, like... Uh, My guest, Matt Connerton. Like like uh, like Peter there. <laughs> My guest, his, uh, Matt Connerton. Are we going to get Matt Connerton in a shot? I think we... P-Dub? <laughs> we'll leave it to... Uh, P-Dub will figure it out. Hey, look at... P-Dub is in the house. I, I I've a, almost uh, don't have a chin anymore. Oh, yeah, you've lost 30 pounds or something. Almost saying. 30 pounds That's in remarkable. six weeks. I've been gaining weight. Uh, you know, I've got a, a way to go to you get to uh, my, my size. You know, I have a hip-hop name. Can we get a name. two shot? I have a hip-hop name just like P-Dub. They used to, uh, back in the day, they used to call me M. Sizzle. <laughs> and what was that for? Well, because I had, I had a friend, Bobby B., who... Uh, uh, in Bobby Bosley? Oh, there who, I am. Who's known as Bobby Freeman? No, different Bobby B. But uh, Bobby B. used to call me MC. That kind of became his nickname for me. And then it, it evolved into M. Sizzle. Master of Ceremonies? No, just, well, because my initials are Matt Connerton. Jeez, I'm not very sharp today, Matt. <laughs> That's why we have as our mascot today, Uncle Shemp. Yes. We, we, folks, we have one camera is out of, there we go, Uncle Shemp. Yes. And, hey, uh, P-Dub, can, oh, and we also have our longtime mascot, Trumpy Cat, because we're going to talk about Donald Trump today. Well, what else is there, really? That's that's just the way Trump likes it. That's the way. Uh -huh. Hey, uh, uh, P Dub. <laughs> Let's see number one: the Hillary and the Star of David. That's <laughs> that's not a that. handsome cat, <laughs> folks. You're gonna have to bear with us. There we go. Hey, can you uh, drop the Ward 13 with John Hopwood for a bit so we can see? There's a, a button out there you push, and it will go away for a bit. There we there go. There you go. That's it. History yes. made the most corrupt candidate ever, and that is a six-sided star. Now, Donald Trump says that's not anti-Semitic, yet that meme came off of a white power, white supremacist. Right, Sight. the star with the cash behind it. Yeah. Some people. Oh, there we have. There we have King, the yes. King of America, the self-proclaimed Emperor yes. of North America. There really was an Emperor of North America. There's there some bum in San Francisco. And he? But, what did he just declared himself Emperor of North America? Yeah, I read about it in a bar because it was on the wall. Oh. Which I, I went to many times. So uh, the not uh, an elected it, position. It didn't, it didn't stick in. Right. Uh, his name was Norton, and he declared himself Emperor of North America. Oh. Okay. Now North America always meant, in business terms, just the United States and Canada. But you know now Mexico because mm -hmm. of NAFTA is yes. part of North America. Yes. I'd, yes. I'd like to be master of the universe. Ultimately, I'd like to be the one who decides who lives and who dies. Hey, uh, let's go back to that Hillary Star of like David, number one. Way off center in that camera. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, jeez. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Hey, we, we're missing a camera. If we have a camera, we're going to occasionally feature P-Dub. P-Dub, do you have any comments so far about the show? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, I don't think the mics pick up what's uh, going I, on. I, let's hope they don't. Uh, uh, pick coming it up. through the, uh, the the monitor there. I think they do. Because uh, P Dub got a little uh, got a little salty there. Jeez, the we language. haven't had Tom, uh, the return of Tom Massingale, huh? And then P Dub have to press his own dumb button to dump himself. Oh, I wonder if it went through. 
Yeah, I doubt it. Hey, uh, one of the things they say is that six-sided star is used by sheriffs. So it can't be anti-Semitic. Right. What do you think of that argument? Well, my comment on Facebook was this. So it is true. If you Google, if you go to Google Images and you look up sheriff's badge, there are some law enforcement departments that use a six-sided star. I can see where it is possible that it didn't occur to someone when using that, that, that it would be taken as anti-Semitic. But here's the thing. Even if it's completely innocent and it just didn't occur to somebody, somebody on Trump's staff, when they tweeted this out, it still shows, uh, even without ill intent, it shows a complete lack of competence. It, it, it's a completely incompetent thing to do. It, it, it's if you're if you're involved in a campaign at that level, in any position, part of your job is to know how things are going to be taken, how things are going to be interpreted, and uh, you know this type of thing. Just but see, it's also possible that Trump knew it would be taken wrong, but didn't care, wanted it to be taken as something uh, nefarious because. As you know, John, my theory is that Trump is uh, trying to uh, somewhat intentionally tank this election anyway because he doesn't really want to be president, so he just doesn't care. So he's probably laughing to himself about all this. Well, one of the things about when they mentioned it was a sheriff star, there's the sovereign citizens movement, the uh, posse comeatus, which is part of the white supremacist. But there's this, uh, I'm not finding it right now on the line, but there's this uh, organization about nobody, I think it's related to the Sovereign Citizens Movement, which was quite established here in, Man in New Hampshire, I don't know if it's in Manchester, that there's nobody, no government authority of any legitimacy above the rank of a, of a county sheriff. And we actually have had some people running mm. uh, for sheriff, usually as a Republican, so they get defeated by Jim yeah, Hardy. Yeah. And they declare that because of the Constitution says there shall be no titles. Anybody with an Esquire, like a lawyer, is not really a lawyer, which is complete garbage because right. an Esquire never was a, a title. Yeah. You know, an Esquire is a, the yeomanry that were not, uh, that didn't have titles, were called Esquire or Squire. I forget his name. The guy who ran for sheriff who ended up moving to Chile. He, he moved he, to Chile? He and his family. Uh, I can't remember his name now, but that guy. Yeah, he was part of that movement yeah. where only a sheriff is considered legal. Uh, anybody else, like state wildlife people or anything, are a fair game, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And so when they do say sheriff, it's code word, it's signaling. Oh, there, there, there's the man himself. Yes. Uncle Sham. <laughs> hey, can we bring Shemp back? Uh, he's a lot prettier than uh, that. There we go, Uncle Shemp. Well, he's no curly. Who, who was? That's true. Good point. Shemp was a good actor, though. My father actually saw him during World War II. What's on Hollywood Park? Oh, really? Yeah. Hey, speaking of uh, of good looking, best newsman in the business, right there, Joel Elber, Joel the Moose Elber. Joel uh, unfortunately couldn't make it tonight. Mm. He, there, you know, it was eighty nine degrees, and he's currently working on his tan. You know, priorities. I thought maybe he was hanging out at Bill's Donuts. Maybe Bill, he finally uh, found it. You haven't heard about having that. the uh, like that one of those meat filled crawlers that sounds so delicious. It's very sad, but Bill's association with the Trump campaign has ended very badly. Well, that's He's in bankruptcy, like so many pe people that deal with him, Mr. Trump. That's too bad. But, I'm hey, sorry. Hey, can we have uh, Joel as the Oscar? I think it's a more salubrious sight. Uh, oh, jeez. The head's cut off. Oh, there it is. Joel looking quite statuesque, and I mean that literally there. Wow. Okay. Apparently, Joel's not comfortable being on television anymore. I heard him talking on the morning show about now Now that he, uh, since Amsterdam hasn't been on because uh, the guy's been doing the morning show, Joel, because uh, he, he was on my show briefly last week, and, and he was on your show for the full hour, and uh, I heard him say it on the morning show. It felt uh, strange to him being in front of a television camera. It's odd because P-Dubs just uh, threw the uh, glass. He threw, he threw a glass? No, P-Dub, yes. our new engineer, Yes, yes. is right through the glass. Oh, he is. yes, he is. Joel could actually, well, Joel was sitting with me yes. here as my co-host. Yes. If he needed to be comforted, P-Dub's right there. That's true. Maybe that's why he felt so at home. I think uh, jo uh, Joel will get, he just needs to be on TV more. Yes, yes. Hey, uh, how many minutes do we have left? We've we got uh, most of the show to go. Yeah, you had a couple guests. 
<laughs> I said wrap it up. You've got a couple of uh, guests who, uh, who who bailed on us, I guess. Well, we won't talk about that. Yeah. Now, how are you doing? You have a guest today, don't you? Sean Michelonis, who's running for executive council, he's going to be on. Uh, he was on about a month ago. Uh, we uh, he, we have a lot to discuss, he and I, because... Uh, what happened? He's in a bit of a feud, an online Let's feud. Let's see if we can find a uh, picture of him. What's his name? Yeah. Uh, Sean, how do you spell Sean it? Sean is uh, S-H-A-W-N. Oh, not like Sean Connery. No, you no. No, I was just watching a couple of the old Sean Connery, uh, James, James Bond. Bond. Yeah, yeah. It's a different world, you know. Jeez, when you're when your first James Bond is eighty six years old, you know you're getting wow. old. Wow. Sean, and how do you spell his name? Michelonis is M I C K. M I C K. E L E L O N I S. O N I S. Executive Council. We're gonna see if P Dub can bring a picture up of I him. I can't. I can't do that. You just have no audio. We don't have any audio? No, you have audio, just not on that computer. Oh, mm -hmm. gotcha. Well, I thought you could uh, put this on the uh, tube. Well. Oh, here we go. There may be some. Uh, it's up. Did you find something? Is he this bald headed gent? Yes. He is, uh, yes. Oh, well, that's not. Let me know. That, looks like, that, that looks like him. <laughs> can we hear you? I can hear him. Be done. P Dub in the house. Let's see. Here we go. We're bringing one up. How's uh, Chris Herbert doing uh, with his, with the new computer? Th that's a good. He probably loves it because I remember oh, Chris Herbert. Go. Chris Herbert was very upset when uh, when they went to that little teeny tiny computer monitor. I wasn't too happy about it either, but I remember Chris making a comment about it on the air. Well, but the damn computer never worked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, can this you bring up better. the screen? There he is. There we go. There it's is. just a little thing, but, you know, we, we, we want you to know that we care and we're trying. Yes. We're trying to make Manchester Public TV interesting because people only have a, a, a attention span. I think Matt's attention span just tagged <laughs> of about five minutes. But now they think it's three. Oh, so if you don't damn. show graphics and videos, people... Oh, they have so many reasons to tune out to begin with, don't they? I think that would be a great uh, uh, slogan for MPTS. We care and we're trying. <laughs> I think you're on to something there. <laughs> Christ, what else are we, can we do? Oh, okay, thank you. Oh, audio to what? Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. We're yes. going to be able to run YouTube videos. Oh, geez, there's a few I'd like to run, but, you know, it's, uh, it, what time, the, uh, is it the adult hour? I don't think quite yet. I think it's a bit early. Uh, when Sean comes on my show, he wants to play a video of, uh, remember Janet, Janet Del Fuco? Yes. So Sean went to court with Janet to help her, and he wants to show a little bit of that on my show. Did, did a debacle and so? I don't think so. I think it went well. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We'll have to see what Sean says about it. But Sean's been in the midst of some controversy online with uh, with who? Slicko, host Slicko. of host of Slicko's World Sunday nights at uh, uh, 8 p.m. on uh, IPM Nation Two. Uh, Sean is also uh, somewhat ensconced in the hip hop community. Ensconced or ensconced? I say ensconced. Am I saying it wrong? Oh, I don't know. No. You're, you're asking me how to pronounce words. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, hey, there's Slicko in the uh, hip hop community. Yes, and uh, well, is he a, a, a <laughs> oh? You found <laughs> there him. There he is. Slicko's world there on the uh, on the Slicko's monitor there. world. Yes, Sunday nights. And, Why uh, is he attacking Mr. Michelonis? Uh Slicko and some of Slicko's cohorts have accused uh, Sean of um, holding a benefit and keeping the money or something, some sort of malfeasance. So Sean's going to come on and address that. Uh, and uh, I think Slicko is probably going to call in, probably let them fight it out on the air. I don't know. I mean, um, you know, full disclosure, Slicko and I are friends and uh, and business associates. So, <laughs> hey, can we go back to Trumpy Cat? <laughs> so I have be... to visit Joel, and I see enough of him. That oh, at least yes. we don't have the speed dial. <laughs> Joel nearly nude. Joel Elber in that picture. Yeah, I'm having some. Uh, ho oh, what do they call it? The uh, PTSD anxiety? from. Uh, <laughs> PTSD from that picture I of Joel. I just might break down and uh, switch uh, whatever. What are genders now? I was just reading there's a thing. A CIS woman. That turns out to be a, a woman that's comfortable with her being a woman and and lives with a man. Didn't we used to call that heterosexual? Yes. And when I was uh, up to as a teenager, that was called normal. Now we call that <laughs> cisgendered. 
<laughs> I am a I am a cisgendered Bella, male. Billable hours for the psychological community. Oh, absolutely. Oh yeah. Well, there is uh, now that you mention it. I mean, there 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 are some people who are concerned that, and this is an incredibly politically incorrect thing to say, but I'll I'll say it. Uh, you are Matt Connaughton, and we're unleashing you. That's right. I am since unleashed. our guest didn't show up. I'm un- the other guest I'm didn't show up. That's right. I'm unleashing but early. But you were, had been invited to co-host with the three other guests. That is true, yes. Um, there, is a, uh, a, there is a theory. Some people, of course, in the psychological, psychiatric uh, community, whatever, uh, feel that uh, people who are transgender or claim to be transgender really are just have a very severe... Uh, psychological issue of body dysmorphia yes yes yeah. exactly and you know I, I personally i mean i'm i'm fine with everybody being who they are i do have uh one of my best friends uh matt marcel you know he i was the best man at his wedding a few years ago and now he's uh uh transitioning into being uh, daphne marcel well who'd he marry a woman yes and now they will be together as two women um S- what's the uh well I, uh, what's that story yeah, I don't know. I mean, Matt kind of came out on Facebook to everybody. He, he has not discussed it with me directly. So the gal knew. Oh, yeah. And they knew when they got married that he was... I, that I don't know. That I don't know. Um, but, you know, I'm fine with it. I, You know, I love him. I mean, it's... Uh, you know, I want everybody to be who Is they are. Is he going to finish what the rabbi started and lose his... Uh, that I don't know. But that that's the what's part... What's his first name? Uh, Matt. So is he going to... Oh, another Matt. Yeah. Is he going to lose little Matt? I don't know. I hope not, because here's my concern. <laughs> and th- this is this is a, a fact. Um, people who do that statistically commit suicide at eight times the rate. Yes, exactly. Of, uh, and of the, exactly. Of so a I peer worry. Population. So I worry. And I know there's somebody out there hearing me say this, thinking, "Oh, Matt's transphobic or something." Absolutely not. Whoops, I forgot to mute my phone. Absolutely not. Hell, I want- tell them to call 413-0223. <laughs> the more the merrier, folks. Yeah, I don't. I think it's a spam call. It's an 800 number. Phones but but it, uh, it's eight. Well, turn them on. Phones are off. Oh, my goodness. Just kidding. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> I hope you take that F-bomb out. Yeah. But uh, I'm not ordering you to, though. But I'm very open. I'm very kind of liberal that way. I think everybody should be free to be who they are. But I am concerned about my friend. Well, Johns Hopkins uh, University, that was the leaders in transgender, quote unquote, surgery and, and uh, sex reassignment, has closed on. Yeah. They said the head of it said there's no empirical evidence that there actually are transgendered people. There are hermaphrodites. Yeah. But, but they're he, born that way. Yeah. yeah. Right. And. Uh, yeah. So it's. Uh, they were. Because there was a guy. His name was Money, a famous psychologist, I think. Uh, Some boy, I think he was a Canadian, got circumcised the old-fashioned way with a cauterizing bell. Oh, my God. Doesn't that sound lovely? Wow. Because, you know, babies are just insensate beasts that don't feel pain. (laughs) Uh, The foreskin's actually attached to the uh, gland's penis at that time, so they have to stretch it, put it all over the bell, and they burn it off. Oh, God. uh, Wow. Many hours. And, wow, uh, really? Yeah, that was a $150 million a wow. year industry 30 years ago. Who no knows how much shit. it is now? Wow. And uh, one of the ki- uh, often, you know, they'd lose the, their penis. Oh, wow. And uh, they, so it was a. I remember the person that wrote the book because he has the same name as my friend Dave Colapinto. John Colapinto wrote about this kid. When he reached, they reassigned him as a girl, they genitals. And then they did intense therapy with him. But when he turned 12 and went through puberty, he became a heterosexual male, lacking yeah. you know, his private oh parts. Wow. And he committed suicide. Yeah. The whole theory then in the 70s was, oh, you know, gender is only culture. If you brought me or you up as a girl, mm-hmm. we'd, you know, right. be whatever. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Johns Hopkins was the pioneer of that but they've closed it down now ironically when it's really taken off and there's many billable hours for psychologists psychiatrists surgeons yeah everybody huh. i'm rather cynical about the medical profession <laughs> and psychology and all of that. it's easy to be cynical well i'm not uh i believe you know, psychiatry psychology science and, yeah yeah of course but uh, and they help people but there's some there's politics involved of course reality socially defined as a uh, as a hypnotherapist, uh, you know we learn to do things like deal with basic phobias and whatnot in in a session in one session, 
And uh, whereas if you go to a psychiatrist for that, you know, you might go for years trying to uh, get over this, this phobia. Unless it's cognitive behavioral therapy. That's 12 right. sessions. And, but that's backed up by science. Sure. In the UK, all psychiatric uh, care now through the National Health of a year duration or under is cognitive behavioral therapy. Mm. And uh, th th that's its own uh, topic. But By the way, uh, I'm... But, I'm, you know, if I'm going to err on the uh, air, I'm going to go with the transgendered people. But I don't know if it's. I'm not sure what you mean by that. You're going well, to go you're with going the trans. Well, if you're going to, I'm not going to say there's no transgendered people sure. and they should be discriminated against or they shouldn't be oh, accommodated. Yeah, no. I will go with, even though it doesn't seem like probably science actually backs it up. Right. No, I think everybody should be free to be who they are. And like I said, my friend uh, Matt now, now Daphne, I don't, I don't love him any less. I just, but there is a, uh, there is a worry, you know, but. Uh, Proud to yeah. say no mutilation with me. My dad made sure I was spared that. <laughs> I have a friend, though. Well, he passed away, actually, Stephen James Blake. But So he was unclipped, but his little brother got clipped because... Because why? Because apparently they asked at the hospital... Oh, is Joel? Well, obviously... Let's, no, let's have him as... Joel is the Oscar. Joel, Joel, Joel's Jewish, so obviously... I, I He had a date with a moil. He's clipped, yes. Um, Unless he has uh, hemophilia. Oh, yeah, good point. Uh, so my friend Steve, his younger brother got clipped because at the hospital, his, his, uh, the, the doctor asked, do you want him to be circumcised? So who? They, they, <laughs> like a person just sweeping up or something that they thought was the parent? <laughs> I guess the, the do so the doctor asked his parents, and his, his, his father said, oh, that's fine. Because he didn't know what that meant. He literally didn't know what that the word, word meant. circumcision? Yeah, meant. so he agreed to it. So that's why Steve's younger brother, Alex, was clipped, because uh, their dad was too stupid to know to say no. <laughs> well, let's ponder that for a while. Yes. You know, the Academy Award is an awful uh, impressive statuette. I actually have a, uh, a couple. I'm, I'm amazed at Joel's... Uh, Not that I won them. Joel's posture. Look at that. Ramrod Joel, straight. Joel, if you're out there, why don't you call in? 4130223. I know you've been blocked on many uh, shows. Has he? Hey, we're going to try for a three camera effect. Can we get some of that neat stuff you did with Joel on uh, Matt Connaughton's show? P Dub's in the house. P Dub, double birds. Are you we're trying to get P Dub to actually <laughs> join in the show. We're going to deconstruct Lord 13 with John Hopper. Oh, my goodness. Hey, uh, I should bring in the things. Uh, all the stuff like uh, Phil Boyd Studge and everything. Well, just like, you know, like through an acid <laughs> trip. One of my uh, loyal viewers did was impressed by one of those videos I made. Oh, one which one? Which featuring uh, Penideville's answer to Joseph Goebbels' uh, Rich Gerard. Wow. Oh, P-Dub, well, welcome back. P-Dub is back. Did you see that little thing he did over there? <laughs> What are we going to be looking at? Nobody? <laughs> we have a ghost here. He, he checked in from uh, Norman, France. He came a day early. Oh, good. <laughs> I, I actually can't talk to the dead, so. Yeah. All I feel is a chill. That could be the fan, but. You ever see that Twilight Zone episode where the. Uh, I doubt there's one I haven't seen. The woman's getting the. Uh, yeah, I used to love Twilight Zone. The woman's getting these calls from her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Never from, mind. These woman's getting these calls like late at night and doesn't know it sounds like it's her dead husband christ i don't remember that one yeah and i then, mean cr criminy i don't remember <laughs> that one criminy i want you to take out those christ or what about cripes cripes is a great word i like criminy it's, really? it's so old-fashioned i say criminy oh, is it criminy why. that's how i say it so at the end of the episode the woman goes to visit her husband's grave and the telephone wire is sticking in her huh. husband's grave god's holy trousers Yes. I'm sure there are some people that have seen that that believe it's the gospel truth. <laughs> I, there was a guy in the Army. I wrote a short story about it, too. Mm -hmm. he, he did a lot of acid. He was an alcoholic. Yeah. Brownie. I, can't, I shouldn't really tell you his name. And uh, he always insisted his middle initial was M. Yeah. He was a uh, supply sergeant, which is an unusual group of people in the army. They run the army, supply sergeants. Yeah. And uh, he insisted the M in his name meant merciless, and he was a Satanist. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, he got into the army because he was the assistant manager of a Hardee's, yeah. and through the, he was selling marijuana through the drive-in window. <laughs> so I, I guess Indiana was like back in the 
in Vietnam, right. one of the things for draftees was people that got arrested. <laughs> you know, the prime, they had a prime. Sure. They had the choice of going right in. Right, right, yeah. And uh, he had this big scar on his head, like the Mark of Cain, because he, he told me, oh, that's Whitey. I told Whitey to go uh, expletive delete himself, and he took the gold pin from the time he rolled the 300 game and hit me on the head with it. But he watched him. He insisted that this movie in which a guy found the, what do they call it, uh, grimoire or something? You know, these things that like, uh, 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 what do you call them, maguses, uh, the, the chief witches or yeah. people dealing with black magic keep. He finds this grimoire, although he had some word for it. Yeah. And while he was reading it, he was in the bathtub and he wound up in hell. And he was telling us that, and he insisted that he thought that movie was real. We later saw it on TV, and it was like, Jesus wow. Christ, you must be. And he is probably a retiree now after so many years of serving his country. Well, so, so when He you believed this B movie, with a budget of about 50000 was actual reality. And he was defending you against the Russians. Wow. <laughs> so when Great you, guy. So when you say Satanist, it sounds it. So when you say Satanist, you mean like he literally worships Satan? Oh, yeah, Satan? he worshiped. But he would never show me in his robes. He was also... Wow. Remember the Ku Klux Klan? Oh, jeez! Wow. Well, Indiana. He was from Indiana, I think. Yeah. They have a big. Although we uh, in New Hampshire, the New England Ku Klux Klan is in Exeter. And here's an interesting fact: Klan memberships doubled since Trump's campaign. For real? Really? Oh, yeah. No kidding. Yeah. My uh, my uncle Matt showed me a picture from like the 1940s, maybe 50s, but it was this black and white photo from a newspaper, an old newspaper that he found, of a uh, of a Klan march. In Exeter, in Exeter, New Hampshire. Well, uh, David Irving, the world's premier Holocaust denier, comes to Manchester once a year. Of course, nobody reports about it, except yours truly. I didn't know that, really. Oh, yeah. What, he comes and gives a speech or something? Well, they don't really publicize it, except on yeah. the black net. And uh, I don't know, he meets people here. Jen gets a lot of, uh, on Facebook, like these Holocaust deniers who try to friend her on Facebook, and, and then they start posting all this anti-Semitic stuff, and, you know, of course, Jen is of, of Jewish descent, so she ends up unfriending them, but it's yeah, been a weird trend, and that's been going on since uh, Trump as yeah. well. Well, you know, I remember they, uh, they had the Sovereign Citizens Movement. Allegedly, the Department of Justice was investigating here in New Hampshire, but they didn't do anything until yeah. after the primary. Yeah. Don't want to alienate white uh, working class potential <laughs> Democrats by you know, talking about racism. And a lot of them would have that type of stuff. You know, the Rothschilds and the international Jewish conspiracy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I asked Joel if he got his, uh, his dividend check from the conspiracy. He says he thinks they have the wrong address. Oh. He didn't actually say that. Oh, but. okay. But you could divine from, uh, from his reaction. No, I just made it up. <laughs> Actually, another friend of mine told me that. Oh, in okay. the Army. Yes. Well, I haven't got my check yet. <laughs> they must have the wrong address. <laughs> hey, let's talk about Donald Trump. Mm. Interesting stuff. You're trying to figure out what makes the Donald the Donald. Okay, P-Dub, let's hit it with uh, picture number nine. No. Oh, well, that's an inter... We'll, we'll do it. Here's a side uh, light. That is yeah, Mayor... Number, that's number nine. Oh. It is? I thought Gatsis' benefits was number six. I think somebody's not only dyslexic, but flipping numbers. Oh, maybe he's looking at the paper upside down. Are you looking at the paper upside down? That's Ted... <laughs> uh, our multi-millionaire mayor took total benefits this year worth $31,729.16. Wow. Yeah. Oh, Oh, here we go. The real number nine. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, tr Trump with his original hair color. Trump is the only one I've, I know of who, when he got older, instead of his hair turning gray, it turned red. It's red? It looks red to me. Is it orange? Uh, kind of actually is that orange. why they have the orange tabby? Hey, hey let's yeah. see the tabby, uh, uh, Trumpy cat, then we'll go back to number nine. Yeah, yeah, he, that's, that's about on. the color of his hair. Because he's uh, may, maybe a strawberry blonde almost, but it's like, he's, he's kind of orange overall, like both his skin and his hair. He's like this big orange guy. Have you ever been a blonde? A natural blonde? They're yeah. rare, yeah. statistically. 
Yeah. I had blonde hair till my 40s. Cause it helped Did you? To, yeah, to be out in California. Oh, okay. You're on the sun a lot. Yeah. I had blonde hair till I was like four years old, and then it got dark. Oh, I, mine lasted well into my 30s. No kidding. And then I was, it started falling out, and it was embedded by the sun. Oh, okay. But when I was like, she's 42 or something, I couldn't, you know, suddenly I had to change it from brown. Yeah. And people do treat you differently when you're blonde. Yeah, well, I used to dye my hair when I was in my 20s, because I found the lighter I would make it, the less people seemed to expect of me. <laughs> Well, you know what blonde hair <laughs> signifies is youth. Thing. Yes. Because a lot of uh, Anglo-Celtic people, North, North, Northern European people, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the people have, uh, that get blamed for everything. I'm being tr- – I'm, <laughs> I'm uh, channeling my inner Trump right yes, now. Yes, yes. Have blonde hair as a kid. Yeah. There he is, brown-haired Donald. Yes. And that's Roy Cohn. Let's see page number 10. I thought page number 10. Pick number 10. <laughs> That is Mr. Cohn with you, Eugene Hunkard. Okay, folks. <laughs> I like to have Dr. Hey, Pepper there as we well. go. Now that there's a handsome shot. Wow. Huh? Yes. Very unprofessional of me to look at the monitor like that. I apologize. There is Joseph McCarthy, the senator from Wisconsin, Tail Gunner Joe. We're still looking for the 200 communists in the State Department. There's a movie about Roy Cohn. I forget what it's called. With uh, James Woods plays him. Oh yeah, because uh, he he died of uh, HIV, correct? Roy he, Cohn. He, he had AIDS. They yeah, say. yeah, yeah. And he's a major uh, figure in Angels in America. Oh, okay, that I haven't seen. He was played on Broadway by Ron Perlman. As he's a very nasty individual. Yeah. He's a, the a premier fixer, the type of lawyer that's a fixer. Yeah. And. Uh, he had connections with the mafia, with everybody. Yeah, yeah. And uh, let's have go back to number nine with Cohn and Trump. Ray, uh, who's phone. talking to you? Yeah, I, I forgot to mute. Actually, Slicko. Slicko is planning to call. Hey, have to, Slicko uh, call in. Uh, oh, can, I'll tell him. Tell him we're <laughs> talking about Don. Tell him to call in about uh, like fifteen minutes. Yeah. Then, then if he's boring, we can just end the show. Sure. <laughs> I'll tell him. <laughs> well, I'll be damned. For the earlier. Oh, we're having some dead time oh, here as Matt goes. Want. Oh, he can there do it go. with his thumbs. Oh, yeah. You sure that you're a, CIA, a CIS guy? C- cisgendered? Cisgendered? Yes. Cisgendered. What is it? You're Russian, a Soviet, the uh, what is it, Commonwealth of International Study States or whatever it is? You learn something it every day. Be. Yes. Now, this was supposed to have highlights. You know, I highlighted the thing, but it did not come out on my printer. Oh. Roy Cohn was disbarred in 1986, and one of his character witnesses was Donald Trump who he had spent a long time, he had been his lawyer for a long time until he came, they, he got sick with AIDS and then okay. Do, the Donald dumped him. I did not know that. I didn't know about that connection. So Roy Cohn, if you look him up, you can look him up in anything. Citizen Cohn was one of the most powerful men in New York, mm. and, but he was a fixer. He had all sorts of connections. The real estate industry in New York is notoriously corrupt. Yeah. It is any, probably anywhere. And how Donald Trump could get the ability to buy a property or to get huge tax rebates and all sorts of favors was using Roy Cohn uh. to go in and touch somebody in the mayor's administration, originally Abe Beam, and later, uh, what's his name? Who's that one? Uh, the bald-headed guy. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not mean. having a good day today. But you know, <laughs> it's been like that for the last six or seven weeks. <laughs> oh, I, I do look good. Huh? Says you look I'm going to borrow that toupee from Joel for the next show. There you go. Maybe I'll do it for the base. Maybe we should have a golf. Show wearing they call sometimes they call them a, a toupee a what is it a doily or a divot you know oh. there you go oh. I mean last time I played golf was miniature golf and I was drunk and <laughs> lost my ball in the drink uh, <laughs> not the one I was having by the way right well, I okay <laughs> Roy Cohn defended Trump's father when he was sued for what would you call it, the redlining or blackball, not renting his properties to African Americans. I've heard the term redlining. Redlining. Yeah. Cohn and Trump 
1973. Interestingly, he was a Jewish anti-Semite. Is this the, the article? Hey, Matt, what, what do you, what do you think? You need to bail me. That's why I brought you in here. You need yes. to bail me out today. Yes. What do I think of, of what? <laughs> or do you, or <laughs> the you price of rice in China. I don't know. I'm price we're bombing today. I'm more concerned Crime about the, We're uh, bombing today. I'm concerned about the price of rice in uh, Britain with the uh, Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> what do you care about Brexit? I don't know. My brother lives in Britain. Yeah? Yeah. Did he vote in the referendum? He's an American citizen. Oh, okay. Never mind. I don't think they're going to leave the EU. I'd be curious to hear, uh, is, is uh, Mr. Massengale in bed at this hour or something? He won't come on the show anymore. How come? I'd be curious well, to get his After I blackballed him, uh, after oh. he was harassing me over uh, Bernie and Hillary. Yes. Yes. Jesus. <laughs> well, Roy Cohn, they say, a lot of people say that Trump, modeled himself after Roy Cohn. Oh, okay. Who was extremely obnoxious and had a, uh, you know, kill everybody attitude. Yeah. Is it possible that Trump has been possessed by the spirit of Roy Cohn? That well, would explain quite a bit. He was 27 years old. It was the early 70s when his father, Fred Trump, was being sued. Yeah. They met in 73. Donald was just 27 years old. As Chief Constable McCarthy, he led the investigations of people which were based on hearsay, and they went after and destroyed people's lives. Interestingly, he was on the team. Uh, his fa Roy Cohn, who was Jewish, was on the team, the federal prosecutors, that went after the uh, Rosenbergs, the atomic bomb spies. Yeah. Now, the federal government used a Jewish prosecutor because they didn't want to come off as being anti-Semitic. Mm -hmm. Right. And I remember Howard Zinn uh, talking about that. Yeah. And it's pretty much known that the, the, the uh, Julius Rosenberg was a spy for the Soviets. It's pretty well established. But whether Ethel was, uh, David Greenglass, her brother, who was far more involved in, in handing over the secrets, to the Soviets, said that that his sister Ethel typed typed up the notes that ga and gave them to that went on to the Soviets. Okay. But he later claimed twenty years ago he lied, and really? he was prompted to lie by none none other than Roy Cohn. Interesting. But of course, huh. that is a very we could have a whole show on that case. The thing was, is Roy Cohn was so intimately involved with McCarthy and with red baiting, red baiting to a degree where they actually destroyed innocent people's lives. Yeah. You know, my father, to his death, always resented the fact that uh, Eisenhower didn't pardon. You know, she could go to life for prison, but that she e executed Ethel. Yeah. Because they had two small children. That was quite a, geez, people were talking about that for for 30 years. When yeah. I was at university from 78 to 82, people were still talking about it. And uh, e, uh, Doc Toro, who wrote Ragtime, wrote a book about it. Oh, really? Yeah. Fictionalized the con. When did, when did Roy Cohn die? What, what year did he 1980s, die? About 1992, I believe. 92, okay. But when Trump, Trump and his father were being sued by the federal government for racial discrimination, Cohn, Trump went to Cohn. And this is what he told them. According to Trump himself in The Art of the Deal, yeah. tell them to go to hell. <laughs> that was the type of person Roy Cohn was. And he represented the Trumps in U.S. versus Fred C. Trump, Donald Trump, and Trump Management, Inc. And uh, Cohn filed a $100 million countersuit against the federal government. The judge dismissed it as baseless and wasting time and huh. paper. No kidding. And Cohn kept attacking the, the Department of Justice and the prosecutors, the FBI, saying they were Gestapo-like tactics, undercover agents, stormtroopers. And the judge would said that all these charges he made were totally unfounded. Huh. And by June of 1975, the judge was fed up with Cohn yeah. and said, I must say, Mr. Cohn, that this case seems to be plagued with unnecessary problems. And I think the time has come when we have to bite the bullet. He forced them into a settlement that the Trumps 
really settled on the government's terms. Yeah. But guess what? The 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 government released its press. You know, they have settled. Yeah. But the Trump said, "Oh, we've won a great victory." <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. Even though they actually had to come to terms on almost the original terms. Interesting. But they say that Cohn then became not only his lawyer, because he's the one who drafted the prenuptial. He actually told her, told uh, Cohn, uh, Cohn actually told Trump not to marry Ivan- Ivana. Oh, really? Whatever yeah. her name is, Ivanka. What was her no, name? No, Ivanka's the daughter. Yeah, Ivana Trump. Who, by the way, converted to Judaism. Oh, I didn't so know I, that. I, I wouldn't say, I don't think Donald Trump's an anti-Semite. I just think he's thick-headed and ordinary. Yeah. My well, my theory is like Ivana, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily think he's uh, any kind of a a, a bigot. Uh, you know, guys like Trump usually, I think the only color they really care about is green. Green, the money. I yeah. think he just, I think he just was catering to a, a a certain denominator to win the nomination. But but part of my theory about Trump and him intentionally trying to tank this election is that. He has not made a general election pivot. He's still trying to settle scores with old rivals from the primaries, all that kind of stuff. It's bizarre. Well, when you're trying to do his psychology, Roy, he mm. became Donald's mentor, Roy Cohn, who is this nasty, acerbic person who was, he told Don, uh, Donald that I've been under indictment to two-thirds of the time from 1952 to, you know, like ni- the 70s. He's been under indictment. And he was. He was brought up by uh, three times by the federal government for conspiracies. Huh. You know, he's a classic fixer type of lawyer. Yeah. And they finally nailed him in 86, and he was disbarred because he was like the face of dishonesty. Yeah. But, of course, things were so much cruder and, and ruder, particularly in New York City at that time. Yeah. And they say that the young Donald, 27, modeled himself after this, you know, break their lawn bones and suck out the marrow. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. Well, the, huh. the Donald's first big deal was in the 70s when he took the, a hotel, the old Commodore Hotel at Grand Central Station, which was, cr- you know, Decayed, yeah, and he turned it into the Grand Hyatt, and he got a forty-year, four hundred million dollar tax abatement. That was in nineteen seventy-seven, seventy-eight. Yeah, and guess who got it for him? Ooh. Roy Cohn huh. went to Mayor Abe Beam, who's probably one of the wor- the worst mayor in New York City history. He's the one that oversaw the bankruptcy, and for years before he was the comptroller, you know, okay, just running the place into the ground. And there was a, he had a city hall staffer, Stanley Freeman, who pushed this through. And then he went to work for Cohn's Law Firm. <laughs> See, everything Donald did, these deals, it's all with vigorous. It's all with, you know, money mm-hmm. being given to this person. That, that's just the New York real estate scene. Yeah. They fought for so many years over redoing Times Square. You know, who is it going to go to? It's not the best firm. It's not even the person that's greased everybody this year. Yeah. The constant bribery and shenanigans. <laughs> it took at least 20 years to get anything going. And the Donald lost out. I don't know if he bid on Times Square. His big thing is he won an uh, option on the, east, uh, uh, the west side rail yards, which were in when they, the high 30s into the low 50s which were, you know, you had Hell's Kitchen was the 50s. Yeah. These terrible neighborhoods that came out with, uh, if you watch uh, West Side Story, which nobody of your generation, it's a big thing when I was young. Yeah. Those crumbling neighborhoods, it took, geez, 40 years to develop those. And the Donald got a option, but he never was able to develop them. Oh, no kidding. He just wasn't able to swing it. Yeah. He was never as important as he pretends he is. Right, He was right. never as popular or, he was, not popular, he was never as powerful as he pretends he was. Yeah. He was in one of the most corrupt cities and one of the most corrupt industries, real estate, which the mob was heavily into. Mm. And, uh, but Roy Cohn got him a $400 million tax rebate. You see, you virtually can build for nothing with, with tax rebates sure, like that. Sure, sure. Well, even now, I mean, there's, there's a lot of people who, who claim that Trump doesn't have nearly as much money as he claims to. That he's just... Oh, you know, his liquidity. What do you think he has? He, 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 he can't have more than $3 billion on the books. Yeah. Who knows what the, he really has in assets, tenth of that or right, something. Right, right. But, you know, he does have that liquidity. Yeah. It's been a long time since I wrote about the financial industry. <laughs> but, you know, I only have 13 viewers. So. <laughs> Cohen's, listen to this. This is from 78. 
Cohn's exploitation of Friedman, the Abe Beam staffer, to secure the Commodore booty was an unforgettable lesson for Donald, exposing him to the full reach of his mentor's influence and introducing him to the netherworld of sordid quid pro quos that Cohn ruled. Mm. And every city does that. Manchester has the quid pro quo. Oh, we, we, it's, it's, it's similar here. Of course. It's in kind, if not degree. Yeah. And uh, this almost ritualistic initiation into the world of this dirty New York politics inducted Donald into the circle of sleaze that engulfed Cohn. The bountiful success of it transferred the predatory values and habits Cohn embodied to his yearning understudy. Mm. And this is they were very close until he was by his aides out of them as a homosexual. Yeah. Because that, you won't believe, because you're 10 years younger than me, how being gay was right into the 70s. You know, that sure, was just sure. in the 80s. Oh, I believe it, yeah. It was so, to be gay was, oh, oh, oh. Right, right. You know. <laughs> I, I was born into a different world and a different reality. <laughs> yeah. New York Times in 1980 Cohn called himself not only Donald's lawyer, but one of his closest friends. And Vanity Fair says they talk 15 to 20 times a day. Here's a great quote from uh, Roy Cohn from his own book, mm. How to Stand Up for Your Rights and Win. Who does that sound like? <laughs> the Bible says that the meek shall inherit the earth. But in my experience, the only earth the meek inherit is that in which they are eventually buried. Mm. There's a nice, all-around nice guy. <laughs> uh, and Trump had a photo of Cohn on his office, and he'd say to people that he wanted to intimidate, you want to deal with me or Roy Cohn? And Roy Cohn, because of his connections, could really screw your life up. Yeah. And tr he signed the hit, and Cohn had a picture of Do the Donald, and he signed it to Roy, my greatest friend. Hmm. So, so when uh, when Roy Cohn uh, publicly came out as having HIV and whatnot, so d did Trump publicly? Well, he didn't come out himself. He never admitted himself. Okay, he was outed in the press. Okay, remember outing was a uh, right. big thing in the eight, late eighties, nineties. I was in the military for like four years. Yeah, uh, you know, so I didn't get back to the states till late eighty eight. So but did, there was always the moral, can you out people? Right, right. He so was outed by the press. So did Trump immediately distance himself? Okay, Go right Cohn now? died in 86. Yeah. He didn't find out. Okay, Cohn got him a $20 million tax abatement for the Trump Tower. You know, this was with, uh, oh, Jesus, who was that mayor? Three-time mayor. It, he was Jewish. He wrote his book, uh, Oh, um, he was from I can that picture Greenwich him. Village. I can picture him, and I can't. Uh, Jesus, he hosted Saturday Night Live once. Uh, yeah, how can I not? Re my mind yeah, is I like can, cottage can, cheese. Ed Koch. Ed Koch. Yes. <laughs> so from the, he only got twenty million from the Koch administration. Yeah. Because Koch really, I don't think Trump didn't do well during those uh, twelve years that Koch was. He did all right. But he didn't get anything like the forty million, four hundred million dollars. Yeah. Cohn got him a twenty million dollar tax abatement from the Trump Tower, and then Cohn represented Trump, filed a antitrust suit against the uh, National Football League when he had the New Jersey Generals in the USFL. Yeah, and when he had a press conference, the only person there was Trump. Trump, Trump and Cohn were the only people. Nobody else, no, no other owner, the, the USFL commissioner, they weren't there. It was just Donald, the Donald's vendetta against the NFL. And that would have been Pete Rozelle. Huh. And in the law, you know, geez, that ended with a thud. Oh, here's an, uh, I wonder if we can say this on TV. Yeah, so he lost the USFL suit, and they uh, charged the NFL with it. They were, conspir they were engaged in all sorts of conspiracies. There were these shadow groups in the NFL huh. that were trying to screw not only the USFL, but the Donald. Huh. You know, must be Pete Rozelle never did have a good head of hair that I can remember. <laughs> you know, he, was, he was NFL uh, commissioner for so long. Who knows? You know, back in the 60s, he might have had a full head of hair. Who's that in the picture, by the way, with uh, Trump and Cohn in the middle? Who's, who's that? He looks familiar. Uh, right? Do you know? I don't know. Yeah, he looks familiar, but I. I, I he wasn't uh, anybody, so yeah. I, I dropped the name out. Yeah, I was wondering. But by the time of the USFL suit, 
Cohen was hit with charges of fraud, deceit, and misrepresentation, taking a client's money, altering the will of an incapacitated man, lying on his bar application, and he was disbarred in July of 1986, a month before he was before he died. Hmm. But when in March 1985, Cohen was outed, you know, as having AIDS, which in that era meant, oh, you're gay. And it wasn't a secret that he was gay. He was a very promiscuous gay man. You know, like, and uh, uh, the Donald Trump dropped him. Just, just ended all their association yeah, that's what I after wondered like about. a dozen years of being his mentor and very close. Wow. And this is what Cohn said. Donald pisses ice water. Yeah. Wow. But uh, when you really read the whole article, there's articles about his, him and Cohn. You'd have to really know Roy Cohn. Yeah. You can see that they're just they're predators. They're always everybody's a, a, an SOB and get involved in conspiracies. Mm-hmm. And it's just one of the things Roy Cohn did was he was a master at publicity. He was of the no no uh, no publicity is bad publicity. Right. All, all publicity is good, <laughs> right. which isn't true when you're a lawyer. Right. But he manipulated the press in New York to pressure people and harass people. And then he had these incredible connections. You know, Ed Koch used to be a vain man. He used to go out with, uh, you know, there was rumors he was gay, but he always would go out with Bess Meyerson, who was a New Yorker, and, you know, as a beard. Yeah. But she's anybody that was a bachelor, you know. Was Ed Koch a Republican? Can't no, remember. he was a he was a Democrat. He had been a liberal Democrat, but once he became a uh, mayor, he was very pragmatic. He okay. became something like the Clintons. He actually helped uh, New York recover from that horrible uh, financial abyss. Yeah, he New was York pretty successful, from what I recall. Was a hellhole. Yeah, I lived there in eighty three and eighty four. Yeah, it was a grim place. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's nothing like now. Yeah. Uh, Ed Koch started to turn it around, but of course it was Giuliani. And uh, Bill Clinton sent about a billion dollars to New York City. Oh, he really? was very friendly with New York. Mm. And then he sent his wife to New York. Yes. <laughs> we could talk about that, but <laughs> why? we're already depressed enough today. <laughs> Do you know that Trump ran and declared himself as a candidate in 1988? No. Because tra- Roy Cohn told him to, to, that this type of publicity is good for him. In 2000, he was going to run. Uh, yeah, I remember at one point he was going to run on the Reform Party ticket. Yeah, the Reform Party. In 88, he he's promoting his book, The Art of the Deal, <laughs> and he decided, I'm going to run for president. Norman Mailer used to do this all the time. Norman really? Mailer, yeah. uh, the great uh, <laughs> great writer. He is. He, he was uh, revolutionized writing. After Hemingway, he's got to be the most influential American writer. Yeah. And uh, But what a blowhard. I met him once. Oh, really? But, yeah. Yeah. He was exactly what I expect him to be. A, no uh, kidding. A fat, uh, belligerent, sexist pig. But we can talk <laughs> about that uh, another time. Yeah. And he ran for mayor. Uh, <laughs> New York Norman Mailer ran for mayor? Oh, yeah, 1969. He I got didn't know uh, that. He got blasted out. Yeah. yeah Jimmy Breslin, if you know who he was, yeah. was his, uh, another g- journalist uh, was his running mate. He oh. Lindsay just crushed him. But uh, he had a lot of fun. He was always would go on like... Uh, Dick Cavs. I'm gonna, Dick. I'm thinking of running for president. He'd use all these different accents. Really? Yeah. Know, once he <laughs> thinks he's Irish, another time he's yeah. Texan and stuff. Yeah. But uh, you know, artists are different than us, folks. <laughs> and so Trump flirts with the presidency. Eighty-eight. You had the seven. He's probably a Democrat then, and you had the seven dwarfs, mm. including Mike Dukakis, wasn't much taller than I am. <laughs> but I technically don't qualify as a dwarf. Good. I think Rich Gerard does. We're supposed to say dwarf. I thought. Stinky. It, isn't that politically yeah, right. incorrect? Like we're supposed to say... Uh, vertically challenged? Ver, 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 oh, I'm vertically challenged yes. by 93% of... Dwar- uh, dwarf and American or something. But I, <laughs> I, I, I embrace my... Uh, there are some advantages, but we can't talk about it on family <laughs> TV. You'd be surprised, folks. <laughs> yep. One of the things they're saying is him, when he was championing the birth birther conspiracy mm. which to you and i is freakish yeah remember oh, yeah. was that 2012 or 2008 2012 
Well, the birtherism started before. There was a lot of momentum behind he it. He was a liberal Trump. Democrat in 2008. Right. Up Trump. till like 2011 or 2000. 2009 is when he started flirting with the Republicans. Right. Because Obama won a good victory. And then Trump kind of became king of the birthers, actually, I think around 2011. Right. And they say that's just like Roy Cohn, a conspiracy theory. McCarthyism. Yeah. Oh, I've got. Oh, if we only had from uh, that great movie, the, the original, The Manchurian Candidate, yeah. where they have uh, this TV character actor is the Joe McCarthy. Oh, you've got. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. 180 uh, uh, communists. <laughs> then they, the press says, how many? Oh, 154. <laughs> how many? Wow. And then he goes into the cloakroom. You know? That was Joe McCarthy. They never could fi figure out uh, how many uh, there were. <laughs> yeah. and the fact was, they really did have them up to like 1947, but then they had the Verona intercepts. Yeah. You know, we have an excellent uh, military intelligence committee. Broke it, and they nailed them. You know. Yeah. And uh, Alger Hiss was an agent. When I and uh, but that's a Roy Cohn thing. You yeah. know, you take well, there's no truth to Obama. I mean, yeah, it, they just happened to put in the Honolulu advertiser uh, that Barack Obama was born in 1961. Hey, but I never saw the newspaper. It right. might be, you know, whoa, uh, this might be all a dream. And you know, we could actually have a show, Matt, where we'll talk about consciousness and that we yeah. actually. None of this is real. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, I asked the, the word so, the word solipsism. I only know you from the sensations I'm, and and sometimes they're quite sensational, Matt. <laughs> Particularly when you don't button up and you show your American. Yes. Yes. And right. uh, yes, from my my own uh, eyes and ears and everything. Mm -hmm. How do I, you know? And a lot of people particularly in the right, would say, I'm full of expletive deleted. Right. <laughs> I like to say, folks, I'm paranoid, but not delusional. I am occasionally, but uh, I usually have good cause. Yes, but yes. They, nobody's hacked my computer in a long time. Good. Basically since I've been gone. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> that helps. Hey, we got two minutes. Why don't you talk about uh, Matt Carnathan? On, hey, we got through it, folks. We did, yes. Next week we might have a guest, or we just might be... Whole expletive deleted again. <laughs> Free balling? With uh, P-Dub. <laughs> Matt, uh, let's have the camera, Matt, to say who's going to be on uh, Matt Carter than Unleashed. Yes, coming up on Unleashed, we have Sean Michelonis, who's running for the New Hampshire Executive Council. Which nobody really knows what that is. A lot of people don't, yeah, up until a few years ago. I really didn't uh, know, to be honest with you. But uh, Sean's going to come on to discuss that, and the, uh, you know, he wants to address the controversy, of course, with... Uh, uh, this has been going on online with uh, Slicko. I must and say, some of Slicko's uh, disappointed me. He didn't call in. No, maybe he's flabbergasted. He's probably gonna. He's probably gonna call in on my show. I, I think he's uh, fixing to. So, well, folks, thank you once again for visiting Ward Thirteen, and we have even fewer calls at this hour than we did. On the yeah, I'm surprised how uh, quiet the phone is. We lost uh, uh, most of my correspondence because they're <laughs> you know, maybe we'll do a show in Brexit. Yeah. I think it's idiotic because I don't give a damn. Right. But uh, I hope you do give a damn enough to turn <laughs> in to Ward 13 next week and see how we can muck it up. <laughs> Adios. Bye. Channel 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. <laughs>